If you want the best schemes created by the best players in the world, head over to acemadden.com, get yourself a membership, and make sure to use code ACE for 10% off at checkout. What's up guys, it's your boy Ace from acemadden.com, and today I'm going to break down the new formation that they just added to the game yesterday, and it's going to be out of the Los Angeles Rams live playbook. So it's not their standard playbook, it's their live playbook. So I'm actually at the menu because I need to show you guys that you have to do something slightly different. So we're in practice mode. Go to advanced settings and then you're going to go down to the nfl live playbooks selection and then toggle it to on you now have access to all of the alternate playbooks for each team as you can see there's an a to the right of every single coach so go to lar which is los angeles rams and let's go ahead and look at the formation so this is going to be an entire formation breakdown i don't have like tons of money plays already because i haven't really labbed it i've taken a brief look at it so if you guys want to jump around the video with timestamps that's totally cool you can do that through the description or the play bar so if you don't want to see all the run plays you can skip over those and the formation is going to be single back bunch x nasty so we'll talk about the run plays first we'll start with wide zone week and we'll just run it a few times get a feel for how it runs and this run really is designed for running off the weak side. In this case, I wouldn't, you know, safety comes down. They also have, I believe a slot cornerback over that side. We would flip and run it like this just because of the numbers. But typically speaking, this run I believe is better served off of the weak side. Again, it's probably better if we flip it or run something else. And do not treat this run like a stretch. You do not want to be bouncing it out to the edges because that's not what the run blocking calls for. As you can see, the hole opens up to the left of the center. So it's not a stretch. It might look like one, but it's not. So there you go. So that's going to be wide zone week. I think that's actually a pretty good run. Let's go ahead and talk about an inside run now. Let's do, I'm not going to talk about inside zone split. Actually, I can briefly just talk about every run. Dive, this is a classic. I don't need to go into this too much, but you're going to get really good blocking on the dive. And I really like that they added this formation to the game uh, because this is actually how the Rams play offense in real life. Like this is a very Sean McVay type formation. And you'll really see that when we get into the passing plays. That they have actually kept it, you know, relatively realistic regarding what the Rams actually do run. We'll do slash real quick. I'm only going to run these a few times because we have quite a few runs in this formation. Just so you guys get a good look at what they, what the run blocking looks like. But you guys can obviously use these formations on your own and get your own judgments about each run, see which ones you like and which ones you want to scrap. Okay, so that was slash. Let's go ahead and look at quick pitch. So pitches, I feel like the animation is better this year, but it's still not quite amazing. Now, if you have a really fast running back, you could probably run this. You know, the offensive linemen are actually doing a really good job and the tight end of really pulling with speed. So it's good to see that. And we're getting a really good edge. Let's actually look at that instant replay because that was actually really nice. What you're going to see, I believe we have a crack block from Godwin, I think. Yeah, so Godwin, he does a really good job sealing the edge here. Now, he Antonio Brown kind of got stuck on him. And it didn't matter too much. We still got to the edge, even with him being late on his block. But overall, I'm really happy with that blocking. Again, Godwin holds it. And this is kind of a boomer bust play. You know, pitches, you can lose four or five yards on them, but you can also break them for big gains. So that's kind of the nature of using the quick pitch. Counters in general are risky as well. Uh, not always the best blocking. But I feel like if you just, if you're like a runner at heart, you know, throwing this in there occasionally is going to be decent. 
but I don't know when the last time counters were actually good. I mean, yeah, there's specific ones that you could say were are decent, but I'm not a huge fan of that one. Inside zone split, and then we'll talk about pass plays right after this. Let's go ahead and use this. And that looks pretty nice, actually. Let's see if that was just because of the formation we were facing. Again, this is not the best formation to look at. You know, I've actually never seen a double team on somebody on the second level. We'll go to instant replay. Like, I get that it's a really spread out D-line, so it's bound to happen, but I've never seen a double team like this on a linebacker. That's pretty interesting. I actually kind of like the run blocking on this. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big inside zone split fan, but I'm liking what I see here. Yeah, that was just very lucky. We were about to get a huge gain. Let's do it again. Yeah, honestly, I'm pretty happy with that run. I would definitely keep that one. So let's go ahead and talk about the pass plays now, which is always a little bit more exciting. And we're actually just going to run these plays stock for the most part. You know, they actually have really good stock routes. So we're really going to be looking at the running back and the deep crosser here. And what I like to do with these play actions is I like to have my left stick pointed in the direction of the bootleg. That way you continue running. So I'm going to do left stick right. And we're going to continue running with Brady. And that way, if you have a mobile quarterback, you're going to have an option to run later in the play. So let's go ahead and do it again. Left stick to the right or whatever way you're bootlegging. Right there, that was really ill-advised. I thought I thought I could get it over that, that cornerback. But I couldn't. Let's do it again. Right here. Regardless of if you're on the run, if you have your hips pointed upfield, you're still going to make an accurate throw. As you can see, we can just run with our quarterback. Brady is obviously not a cheetah, so we're not going to get too many yards, but as you can see, we do have an option. And your running back is an option despite him going the opposite way of the bootleg, so I'll show you. You can throw it like this, and there's going to be a high-low between the receiver going to that part of the field and him, and you will make an accurate throw on this. So, you know, he got stuck on the offensive line. But overall, I, I kind of like these bootleg plays. I mean, especially we have a tight end blocking and we have a delay flat, which means we really don't have to worry about people blitzing us. I could have thrown the crosser, but we ended up settling for the flat. Do it one more time, and then we'll move to the next play. And overall, just a solid play. And it's kind of the same story with all of these plays. I've briefly looked at all of them. And there's a lot of play actions, and I recommend keeping the play action at least sometimes because I feel like they're actually decent play actions. So right here, this route comes across extremely quickly. I like that a lot. We also have a deep crosser going to the other side of the field across from the bunch. And then we have a sit route from our running back, which is also nice. So this play honestly is good stock. You can keep the play action. This is honestly going to be a good formation for somebody who wants to be balanced. And it's going to really help you stop a lot of blitzes. People who are very blitz heavy, they're not going to be able to blitz against this play action. It's going to be really hard to do that. I was super late on that. Don't be an idiot like me. If one of those routes should be open. I highly doubt they're going to have a double Mabel. Run this one more time. And overall, this is just super solid. This is a formation I could have a lot of fun in. Let's go ahead and keep going. So we've gone over PA drag wheel. We've gone over PA, uh, yeah, PA cross. Let's go ahead and do, let's do PA boot now. Now I do make an adjustment on this play. You don't have to make this adjustment every single time, but 
really, I just like to put B on a streak. That way you can hit the corner route. We're going to continue the bootleg. Right here, the, this was actually a really bad example. And let's go ahead and move the ball back a little bit because this is going to be a really good play if you're not on their side of the field. So let's go ahead and maybe drop it to like right here. And this will be, this corner route is going to be wide open versus a lot of things. So even with pressure coming off the other side, the bootleg makes it so we can make this throw or we can throw the ball away, either one. You're going to have a lot of safe throws here. So as you can see, we are going to get this along the sideline. I don't think he got his feet in bounds, but honestly, this, this streak needs to do a little bit better of a job here so we can like really right here. See, we just play for another down, just throw it away. So man coverage is going to do decent against this play because you only have the crosser really. I mean, you can maybe throw the table route from the running back as well, but so this is what we're looking for here. This is what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get this deep corner. It's going to get behind zone drops. Remember left stick, right to continue the bootleg. And I just like how you can attack both sidelines pretty well. I kept the zig this time. It looks like you can keep that as an option. Up to you. If you keep the zig, you have another option against man, which is nice. I just don't know how well an outside third is going to play that. It's hard to tell right now. But if an outside third plays it really well, then you'll have to have that that route to clear him out. So that's going to be, I already forget the name of the play. Um, let's see what it was called. PA boot. Let's go ahead and go over to the next one. We'll do PA post curl shot. And this is an interesting play. I want to see how the X route runs. I haven't run this play yet. Okay, there's two things I don't like about this. Go to instant replay. The play action actually isn't very good. If you look at Tom, you're going to see after the play action is done, he's actually facing our own end zone, which is genius. Good job, EA. So this play, I would for sure cancel the play action. And then I would probably put like RB on a slant or something. Maybe put A on a delay drag. I would do something like this for sure. Yeah, you don't want your quarterback facing your own end zone. Pro tip. So he does get really deep. Now a user can be all over that. It's not exactly the hardest route in the world to take away, but it is unique. It sits right underneath a safety and behind the hook zones. You do have your slant, you know, that can distract the user as well. And I'd say it's an interesting play. You might have to lab this one up a little bit more than I'm doing right now. If you really want this one to have a lot of success. But as you can see, we're kind of... The whole purpose is making the user pick between the slant and this deep sit route. And overall, it seems like an okay play. I kind of prefer the other bootlegs so far. Let's go ahead and do PA boot corner post. Seems to be basically the same thing we've been dealing with. This guy comes across super fast. I don't know. It might be placebo, but it looks like Mike Evans was running super fast on this route. And it might be, yeah, it looks like he's just, he is running fast as hell on this route. So I don't think you can man that route up. Do it again. Yeah, he is, he is getting across the formation extremely fast. That's not his standard speed. Let's put him on like a slant real quick and just... Just try to eye test this. He seems a little faster on the other route. So it looks like that might be a route you can build around on this play. As far as like the the uh, corner post, you know, I'm not really seeing much from that. The corner post clears out room, but 
So far, really, it looks like that crosser is the only thing special about the play. You could probably just substitute that with one of the other play action passes. We'll look at, we will look at verticals in a second because I've actually looked at that play already. And we'll do PA post dig. PA post dig. Let's run it stock real quick. Okay, so I actually don't like this route combo because you don't have anything underneath. Yeah, you need something underneath. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's keep the play action for now. And let's just put A on like a, we could put them on an out route. Yeah, let's put them on an out route. So this guy got a lot of separation. A lot of separation versus man coverage. That's good. He does have route tech, so keep that in mind. It's going to be slightly different. Yeah, so this is a little bit better. Now, a thing I'm not liking as well is this other backside dig route. He's getting over there really quickly to the point where, I mean, the spacing isn't the best between both of both out routes. Or I guess it's a out route for Godwin and an in route for Mike Evans. I Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the spacing on that. So... You could change things up a little bit. Maybe do something like. Something like this, maybe. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. Let's do that again. So we're going to drag A. We're going to zig B. And then we will streak our B. So we kind of have like a dagger concept here. I was actually kind of missing having that other, other, um, let's put a on a streak B on. Sorry. I'm just labbing here. I haven't run this play before. Yeah. So this can be fine versus man coverage, but you know, the thing I don't like is this route doesn't get deep enough to the point where, I mean, a cloud flat would have picked that off. So. This guy will get separation versus man, but overall versus zone, I don't think it's going to be like the best play. It can be like a fundamental play, just kind of like a basic, like I said, dagger concept. And I think I've talked about pretty much everything I want to talk about. I tried PA boot slide. I didn't like it. I'm not going to touch it again. You guys can mess with that on your own. And we'll talk about, I'm not going to talk about spacing either. It's just too basic. We'll talk about verticals though, because this is actually very unique. So, the reason that this is actually really unique is because X is on this really interesting deep corner. And he's like, he doesn't really run like a deep corner. He runs more like a, I hate to say it, like it sounds very body, but it, he runs it like an angled streak almost. So let's go ahead and you see how he doesn't, he doesn't make a break. He doesn't make any kind of break. He just kind of rounds it off. It's like a banana route. Let's do it again. Versus a cover two, this is going to be very, very nice. This route can actually get open versus cover three outside thirds as well. And if you don't like having this deep crosser kind of running into him, you can do something like this as well. Put RB on a slant, running back on a sit route. That's going to be, I guess, pretty bad versus man coverage. We'll mix it up again. Let's go ahead and do RB on a curl, A on a drag, Y on. Should do something like this. Okay, it's just engage eight. Do something like this. So let's check it against the outside third here. Yeah, he actually, he's getting played pretty well by the outside third, but I've had a couple reps where the outside third doesn't really play him well. And this is all Madden. So in all pro, it'll be a different story. And he got pushed inside there. He got pushed inside. That kind of messed up what we were trying to do with that outside route. 
I tried getting to the delay fade. Yeah, so honestly, the stock setup might be the best with an out route from your running back. So let's go ahead and do this. Pass lead the tight end on the inside. This can be open a lot versus zones. And then if you leave the crosser, at least you have another option versus man coverage. Just trying to see if this rock can get open versus that outside third. Yeah, he's he's not getting open. So disregard what I said about that. This is going to be your man beater route. It's going to be the crosser and your out route from your running back. Those are the two routes that will beat man coverage. You can low ball it here because that guy's clearing out room for your crosser. And I would say that's the general gist of this formation. It's a lot of, you know, good runs, a lot of good play actions, just a lot of good stock routes. I'm actually pretty happy with what they've done with this formation. I also think it's, I'm blind. I think it's pretty realistic to what they do in real life. And I think that's very fitting for the live playbooks. So overall, this formation has my stamp of approval. I recommend you guys try it out for yourselves and see if it fits your play style. If it does, that's awesome because I feel like they kind of dropped the ball again this year in regards to day one formations. A lot of people are still in gun bunch. I'm not seeing a whole ton of variety right now. And this does seem like something that could potentially be off meta. So hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, please drop a like on the video. It really helps me out. And as always, subscribe for that daily Meta 22 content. I'll see you guys later.